So this is the start of the thermochemical change unit for Chemistry 30 uh, with Alberta curriculum. This unit is weighted 20% uh, or roughly 20% according to the curriculum. The first topic we're going to discuss is always uh, one of the diploma questions when you write the diploma or something that will be on your test is realizing where our energy ultimately comes from. And I'm going to break things into two categories. A uh, source of, of energy that you can work its original source all the way back to coming from um, the sun and sources of energy that don't. Okay. So just these two categories. Okay. Um, so any discussion of energy that ultimately is coming from the sun, the first thing that comes to mind for most students is solar. It's almost built right into the word solar uh, slash sun. Energy from the sun hits solar panels and then we convert it to uh, electrical energy and then it gets converted again to many other forms of energy. You're going to see in this list that there's a lot of energy conversion. Now the the second thing I want to put on this list is something students wouldn't think of and is the most important part of this discussion is the fact that fossil fuels ultimately got their energy from the sun. So the uh, gasoline that's going into an automobile, uh, we're going to follow that back. So gasoline ultimately came from the ground. And you think of a, where did that come from before it was in the ground? That came from uh, some form of living organic matter that grew, uh, decomposed, uh, ultimately got covered under a lot of rock and sediment. Okay? But ultimately, fossil fuels came from biomass, from things growing. And biomass, anything that grows, ultimately got its energy from the sun and converted it through photosynthesis. Okay? So uh, fossil fuels, if you, I'm going to do this list by state. When fossil fuels haven't broken down a lot under the ground, they haven't gotten as, as hot and haven't had as much pressure, they might be in the solid form of coal. Okay. With enough heat and pressure, uh, you can only get oil, the liquid form, or if the uh, biomass breaks down even more, it'll turn into a gas, and we call this natural gas. Okay. That'd be like the methane that's heating uh, your home. So it's a couple of sources of energy that we ultimately get from the sun, the first being fairly obvious. The second, you probably didn't realize that fossil fuels came from uh, the sun. Okay. Now, we don't have to let biomass um, decompose for millions of years under the ground. You can always um, grow corn or sugar and turn that into fuel. Okay. So you have a whole list of biofuels or biomass. Because anything you grow, that energy only came from the sun via photosynthesis, uh, it fits on this list. Okay. Um, a couple others that require a bit of thinking uh, about, whether, about the fact that they actually come from the sun is something like wind. Wind energy, windmills. See, their energy comes from, well, the wind has to move, so kinetic energy in the wind, but what makes the wind blow? Well, that's ultimately the sun heating the earth unequally, and that will cause air masses to rise at different rates, which will cause the wind to blow. So wind energy is ultimately coming from incoming solar radiation. And the last I'll put on this list is hydroelectric. And we have a similar type of uh, origination as we do wind energy, uh, but this is now incoming solar radiation from the sun uh, driving the water cycle, causing evaporation of moisture to high points, and then we can uh, recoup, uh, tran uh, transfer the potential energy of the water into electrical energy. Uh, so this is the, the main sources of energy on Earth that ultimately come from the sun. I'm sure there are other examples, but this covers the vast majority. Okay. Uh, Alberta Chem 30 diploma exams tend to focus largely on energy of sources that come from the sun, and the most important to know is uh, the fossil fuel side. 
Now, I want to contrast this. Not all forms of energy on Earth come from the sun, and there's a, a, a few I want to highlight. The first one the students typically think of is nuclear energy. That is not coming from the sun. That is coming from uh, breaking down fission or fusion of atoms uh, to release energy. And unfortunately, both of those aren't commercially done yet, both breaking down and combining. Okay. Second one, I grew up in Atlantic Canada near the ocean, and there is some tidal energy. Okay. Using the fact that the ocean has uh, tides, high and low points, water coming in and out of areas, you can uh, use that kinetic energy of the water to make energy. Okay. Now, if we think of what drives the tides, that is not the sun that drives tides. It's actually the fact that we have a moon. Okay. So that's why that fits on this list. And last one that I'll put on this list is using the heat of the Earth which does not come from the sun, it's just the heat of the heat uh, of the core of our planet in geothermal. Okay. And that's the last of the sources of energy that I wanted to talk about in this uh, intro last into this unit. Okay. We're not going to come back to this list regularly throughout the unit, we're going to talk about chemical changes throughout uh, the next couple of weeks, and you have to. This is a good uh, list to go back to and realizing where did that energy come from that we're going to be discussing uh, regularly. Mm -hmm.